Hi, and welcome to the sewing site featuring Annalene Patterns. Today we're gonna to do a video tutorial for the Sage and Sterling sweatshirts. Um, so I hope that you find this information valuable, and I know sometimes if you, know, you get stuck on a step, it can be really, really helpful to see it being done live instead of just in a written tutorial. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that you can be notified of new content as we post it. A couple of things that you're gonna need for this particular design is going to be first a separating zipper, if of course you're doing a zippered version. I would recommend that you purchase the longest available zipper that you can find, and we will go through in this tutorial how you can customize the fit and shorten it. Uh, I always like to have several of them handy in some primary colors so that I can customize the fit for either kids wear or adult wear and not have to worry about running out last minute to get a longer zipper. So also make sure, of course, you have your fabric and optional drawstring. So the yardage requirements are um, available in our pattern files as well as the written tutorial file. It's in both places. And make sure that you have your pins um, or clips, your um, scissors or rotary cutter if you prefer, and your sewing machine. So I myself am gonna be doing most of these steps on a serger and a cover stitch. However, if you have just a sewing machine available, grab your double needle um, and grab your walking foot and you can um, make a beautiful garment with just a sewing machine. So let's go ahead and get started. First step is the sterling pocket. You're going to place your mirrored pocket pieces right sides together. We're doing a zippered version in this video. You're going to want to sew along the top the hand opening and the side and only sew along the bottom if you're doing a hemmed version and not a hem band. I'm gonna flip the pieces right sides out and top stitch where shown. For the side pockets, you're gonna place the pocket pieces right sides together and sew along the entire outer edge of the pocket with the exception of the bottom if you're doing the hem band version. If you're not doing the hem band version, leave an opening um, enough to go ahead and flip it right side out like so, flip it right side out through the bottom, and make sure that you press those corners out. I like to use this handy dandy little tool here to push the corners out to make sure that I have sharp, crisp edges. Go ahead and make sure you get every corner. And then you can press it with an iron, and then top stitch the hand opening closed, like shown. Next, for the sage pocket, where you're gonna place a gathering stitch near the edge of the hand opening, and you're gonna have your facing piece. You're gonna want your gathers to um, be created so that the hand opening will fit your facing piece. So go ahead and gather your fabric, and make sure that you equally distribute the gathers, just like so. Mine's sticking a little bit along the top, but just go ahead and even them out, just like so. Now place your facing piece right side together with your pocket piece and pin in place, lining up the raw edges of the hand opening. Pin this edge. Ideally, you're going to want to have the top edge of the pattern piece straight across and the side edge of the pocket piece, excuse me, straight up and down. And then go ahead and just place additional pins to make sure that your facing does not shift. Just like that. And now sew the facing to the hand opening. The piece will look like this. And then you're going to go ahead and flip that will first remove your gathering stitch. And just go ahead and pull them out. And then flip your facing piece to the back of the pocket. And wrap it around the seam allowance and then place pins to keep it in place. You should have a little bit of overage on the back of the facing piece after you cover your seam. I 
I don't recommend doing these pockets in a particularly thick fabric because it makes this step very difficult and the gathers don't really show up anyway. And on mine, it looks like my gathers are flattening out a little bit, but that's all right. And go ahead and top stitch that facing that's now binding down. And it will look like this. Now, when you attach this, you're going to be folding this, um, the top edge down a quarter of an inch, pin in place, and then fold the side a quarter of an inch, wrong sides together, and pin in place. And then you will top stitch the pocket onto the sweatshirt. You will also need to do the bottom edge if you are doing a hem version. So now for the sage side pockets, you're gonna notice that the piece is not symmetrical. There is a marker to notate where the side pocket is. So you're gonna place mirrored pieces right sides together. You're gonna to sew all along the outer edge, leaving a one to two inch gap at the bottom in order to um, flip it right side out. Again, using my handy dandy little tool here, I'm going to flip this right side out. And then I'm going to press it out. After you press this out, it's a good idea to use a iron in order to press it flat so that your seams are a lot crisper, makes the top stitching a lot easier in future steps. Oh, this is giving me a little bit of trouble, but I will prevail. And so now for the opening and the gap, you're going to fold it in right sides together and tuck that seam allowance in and then pin it in place. And that will be closed during the top stitching step when we actually put this onto our garment. The application of this side pocket on the sage version is going to come a little bit later because you need the side seam sewn in order to place this pocket. You can leave this opening along any part of the side pocket you want. I did it at the bottom. Gets a little tricky sometimes, tucking that seam allowance in along the curve. So you can do it along the top too. It's really whatever you prefer and go ahead and top stitch the hand opening closed and we'll leave the rest for when we actually put it on the garment. Pockets in the sterling side pocket. Um, right here is the kangaroo pocket. You're going to top stitch it along the top and along the side, only along the bottom as well if you're doing a standard hem version. On the left here, this is the side pocket about a half inch from the side seam. You're gonna top stitch along the side and the top and the middle seams. Attaching the sleeves. Now, when you're looking at your sleeve piece, it's important to notate that the shorter curve is for the front and the longer curve is for the back. So we're gonna place our back bodice right side up. And this is indicated with double notches on the back sleeve on both the sleeve piece and the back bodice. So you're gonna go ahead and place the sleeve right side together with the back, line up that sleeve curve with the double notches and go ahead and sew that seam. Now that that's sewn, you're going to go ahead and fold that sleeve piece out and you're going to repeat with the second sleeve. Place the sleeve right side together with the back bodice. Again, lining up the double notches on the pattern piece and sew that seam. All right, now that that's sewn, we have both of our sleeves attached and now we're going to go ahead and do the sweatshirt or bodice front. You're going to place your front piece right sides together with the sleeve. So we're doing again a zipper version here. Start with one side. Go ahead and sew that in place. Repeat it with the second side as shown. And then place your garment right sides together with the front and back sweatshirts on top of one another. 
And from here, we're going to go ahead and straighten things out, line up our side seams from the sleeve and all the way down to the sweatshirt bottom, and now we're going to sew the side seam. In sewing the side seam on both sides, now what you have looks like this. So next, this is going to be where we install the Sage side pockets, if this is the version that you're doing. So you're going to notice that the side seams are sewn, doing a non-zippered version here in this picture. And we'll go ahead and line up the side seam marker. You're going to see that the larger part of the pocket is going to go towards the front of the garment, and the smaller side of the garment is going to go towards the back. It's going to wrap around that side seam. So you're going to want to pin the bottom in place about a quarter to a half an inch from the hem band cut line. And then you're going to flatten out your pocket and pin it in place along the back of the garment. So these pockets are intended to gape a bit. And so you can either sew it flat to your garment or you can tilt it up so that it creates a gape as intended in the design. So in order to do this, you can just tilt that front point up as much as you would like to create your preferred look. I'm going to do it about one inch up and about an inch or so in. And let's go ahead and see how that looks and it takes a little bit of eyeballing it. And then go ahead and flatten out that bottom curve and pin it in place. And that's what the pocket is going to look like. So now you have to repeat the process with the other side. Go ahead and pin it at the side seam, same distance up from the hem band cut line. You're going to make sure that you're mirroring the first side that you did. Typically takes me a couple of adjustments to make sure that's exactly where it needs to be to be symmetrical. Never try to cheat on the measuring and remeasuring in order to get this right. So here it's about two and a half inches from the side seam. And so I'm going to want to recreate that here. About six inches from the bottom. That looks like it may be about right. Just measuring again. Not quite sure if this placement is right. It doesn't look like the pocket's gaping quite as much, but let me pin it in place and take a look at it again. Sometimes it takes standing back for a minute. And it doesn't look quite even. It looks like my side seam was hidden a little. That's quite a bit further out. So let's remove the pens and adjust. This really creates a really neat look on these side pockets. I love the gaping look. All right, let's try it again. Okay, that looks about two and a half inches. That looks, now that looks like it's about right. Yep, that looks pretty even to me. Inches, five inches, six inches, six inches, and we are good to go. Now, time to top stitch those curves, and this is what the finished version will look like with those pockets. And again, this is a hem band cut line, so it's about a half to a quarter of an inch above that hem band cut line. 
So now attaching the hemband and sleeve cuffs, we're gonna first place our hemband right sides together and sew up the side seams. Then we're gonna open it up, place it wrong sides together, and pin it in place. We're gonna pin it at the side seams and also at the back center. You're gonna notice that because this is a zippered version, we have three separate band pieces. The largest band piece along the center, that's of course for the back of the sweatshirt. If you are doing a non-zippered version, it'll of course just be two long bands instead of the three that are pictured here. So pin it along the side seams, both of the front edges, and then the back center. Remember, the final finish of this garment is only as good as your preparation. So pinning enough is important to make sure that your band does not shift when you're sewing it on. So now you place your sweatshirt right side up, and we're gonna go ahead and line up the band with the bottom hem. I'm going to mark the center of the back sweatshirt, place a pin there, and make sure that I line that up with my band. Line up all the raw edges along the bottom. Line up your back center. Remove one pin and combine it. And pin at the side seam. Like so. The front edge on the zippered version. And then do the other side. Then all the layers on the front edge. Place additional pins as needed. I prefer using pins for my hems because I tend to sew over them. I know a lot of people prefer not to do that. It works well for me. Clips, once I remove the clips as I'm sewing, sometimes things shift and that drives me a little batty. So this hem band is going to stretch to fit the sweatshirt bottom. And we will stretch it to fit as we sew. And now sew that bottom seam. If you did not add a hem band to your sweatshirt, now would be the time to hem the bottom of the sweatshirt one inch. All right, now we move on to the sleeve cuffs. So you're gonna place your sleeve cuff right side up and just check to make sure that you have the direction of greatest stretch going um, from right to left. You're going to fold it over once from right to left and then down in half again, again. And you're going to sew along this edge right here on the right hand side through all layers. So now this is what your sleeve cuff will look like and you're going to grab just the top piece a fabric and wrap it around to the back and it creates an enclosed seam. This really helps when sewing it to the garment garment because you don't have to worry about your um, sleeve cuff seam shifting. So now we're going to attach the sleeve cuff and we're going to place it inside the sleeve. So our sleeve is going to be inside out and our sleeve cuff, we're going to place a pin on the halfway mark across from the side seam, and we're gonna line that up with the side seam on the sleeve and the halfway mark on the sleeve opening. We're going to insert the cuff into the sleeve end so that right sides are together, and we're gonna pin it at the halfway mark and at the side seam. I prefer my pins to be on the inside of the garment 
because the sleeve end itself is going to be against the feed dogs. And the band is going to be on top of the machine. Okay, so now you sew the sleeve cuff to the sleeve end and go ahead and unfold it. Make sure you repeat this process, of course, with the other sleeve. And the result is a beautifully attached sleeve cuff that has not shifted while sewn. All right, now, so prepping for our zipper installation, we're gonna to wanna to neaten the edges along um, the inside edge of our sweatshirt here to just create some stability. All right, now for the zipper installation, you're gonna to wanna to take your zipper and lay it against the inner edge of your garment and basically notate with a pen how long exactly that you need um, your zipper. So you can see here that I have a pair of needle nose pliers and I'm using those to go ahead and remove the extra teeth about three teeth below where um, I measured the length of my zipper was needed. So again, you're going to measure it from the bottom edge of your garment all the way up to the neckline on the inner edge of where the zipper is getting installed. Now, you can see here that it's being really finicky with me, so I'm having to muscle it a lot more <laughs> than I probably should need to. This is one of the more difficult zippers that I've had this happen to. But persevere. You're stronger than the zipper. You will get them off. Make sure you look and you cut it off evenly on both sides. I'll go ahead and get that out of the way. And now onto my garment. I'm going to go ahead and make sure the length is right again, which it is. And so now I'm going to lay my garment out. I'm going to place the zipper right side together with the inner edge of the front bodice and go ahead and pin it in place from the bottom all the way up to the top neckline. There we go. Make sure you pin it at the pocket as well. Pinning, pinning, pinning is so important with zipper installation. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the second edge off, or excuse me, the second side of the zipper off so that I can pin it and sew it easier. And now take it to my sewing machine. You sew as close to the zipper teeth as you can with just a straight stitch. I use the longest straight stitch available. And now you're going to turn it, flip the zipper to the back, and then top stitch as close to the zipper teeth as possible. And then we're going to do it again with the second side. All right, so this is what the top stitching looks like on the right hand side. And now you're going to place the second side and attach it back to the, to the other side of the zipper. So you're going to close the zipper and this is to make sure that we want to make sure that this is all lined up perfectly. In order to do that, we're going to close the zipper. I'm going to place the other front center edge right sides together with the zipper, pin it at the bottom. Line up the hem band. Make sure that it's even on both sides. It's very easy to have this fabric shift when you sew it, so it's really important that you measure, remeasure, verify, re-verify, because you will be so happy with the final result if you do. So here I'm making sure that my pocket edges are lined up. I'm gonna double check this again. I'm gonna continue pinning, and I'm gonna check that pocket again before I actually take it to the sewing machine. Zipper installations aren't difficult. They just take some patience, especially when sewing a thick fabric like I'm sewing right now. 
right, put it in place. I'm going to check that pocket line again. It's lined up right here with my cutting mat, and that looks like it's perfectly lined up to me. There you go. Take it to the sewing machine with a straight sit, stitch, so as close as those as close to those teeth as possible, and then flip it right side out. And look at that pocket matching. Looks beautiful. So now you just have to top stitch the front zipper edge on the other side. I'm going to separate it, separate the zipper to do this. And just take it slow and make sure that my fabric doesn't shift. And this is the final beautiful end product of the zipper installation. So now on to the necklines. First up, we have a neckband. So you're going to place your neckband right sides together and sew the short end to create a continuous circle. Once that's done, you're going to, I like to clip the center of my seam allowance so that the neckband lays flatter. I'm going to press the seam allowance down out to either side to create less bulk and pin it at that seam. And then measure the halfway point along the neckband. place a pin to mark it. Now we're going to place our garment wrong side out. We're going to pin that back center seam to the middle of the back neckline, pin the front to the front center neckline, and then we're going to stretch the band to fit the rest of the neck neckline and pin it in place. You're going to want your band to stretch evenly. The more pins, the better, especially with the thick fabric like this. I actually cut my neck band a little bit wider for this particular fabric because it is bulky and it tends to suck up more of the fabric than I'd like when sewing bulky neck, neck bands like this. So go ahead and pin it in several places and then stretch the band to fit as you sew it to the neckline, making sure not to stretch the neckline itself, but only stretch the band. All right, last pin here. and go ahead and sew those together. So now you flip your neckband out and you top stitch the seam allowance down for comfort. Now for the hood. So there are a couple versions of the hood available. There's an overlapping version and there's a non-overlapping version. There's optional drawstring um, buttonholes or grommets that's indicated by a plus, size on, plus sign on the pattern piece. So for this version, um, this is a non-overlap version, you're going to place the hood pieces right sides together and just sew along the head curve. Now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and with a three quarter of an inch seam allowance, we're going to fold our front hood opening wrong sides together, three quarters of an inch and pin it. I'm using my so engage here to make sure that my hem allowance is consistent along the entire front of the hood. Forgive me my sewing gauge, the little purple slider is very loose, so it keeps moving on me here, but it's three quarters of an inch. <laughs> So when you sew this hem, you're going to want to try to get as close to the edge of the hem as possible if you're doing a drawstring version, because you want to have enough room to actually pull the drawstring through. Before you do this hem, make sure that you are installing your buttonhole or your grommet opening before you do this hem, 
Otherwise, you won't be able to obviously pull your drawstring through. There's also a center front marker on the pattern piece, a notch that's indicated along the neckline that you can use if doing an overlap version. That will be where both pieces overlap. We're not going to be overlapping here, but that's something important to note. And then one more pen. I'm going to go ahead and take this to your machine and top stitch it. And this is what the hood looks like. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab my garment that is wrong side out. And I'm going to turn my hood piece upside down. I'm going to line up the back center of the hood with the back center of the neckline and pin it in place. Then I'm going to go ahead and place the hood inside the garment and line up the front edge of the hood with the front edge of my zipper. Make sure that you line this up really well. You don't want the zipper to be poking out of the neckline. Make sure that you're covering it well enough. Even have the hood hang over just an eighth of an inch or so slightly to just make sure that the zipper doesn't poke out. And then go ahead and line up the rest of the neckline. The hood will stretch slightly to fit. Place as many pins as you would like to make sure that your fabric doesn't shift. And then sew them at the neckline. Flip your garment right side out and go ahead and top stitch down that seam allowance along the neckline for comfort. Don't skip this step. It definitely makes a difference, when, especially when you have the zipper version. That edge can really be uncomfortable along, along the top of the zipper if you don't do it. Right. So we'll top stitch the seam allowance right there, all the way around the neckline. And this is your finished, beautiful zippered garment. Okay, so now I wanna check and make sure that my zipper is secure and it's not coming off. It's secured actually by my top stitching, but if it's not, you can place a slip stitch right here and um, just do a slip stitch just several times around the edge of the zipper and make sure that um, your zipper end is secured on both sides so that it doesn't slip off. And you're done. Okay, well, we are done. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to post it in the comments below. And I'd be happy to um, answer any questions that you may have. Thanks again.